alkanes and cycloalkanes, also known as saturated hydrocarbons, have only single bonds between carbons. All carbons in alkanes and cycloalkanes are sp3 hybridized. The general formula for alkanes is CN H2N plus 2. If we are to consider linear alkanes, we can have a homologous series which differ only by a CH2 group. These are methane for one carbon, ethane for two carbons, propane for three carbons, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane for 10 carbons, and decane for 11 carbons decane for 12 carbons and others. Alkanes may be linear or branched. Alkyl groups, those groups with one less hydrogen than alkane, may be named by replacing the ane of the corresponding alkane with il. For example, this group here has one less hydrogen than methane and we call it methyl can also be symbolized by Me. This one here with one less hydrogen than ethane is called ethyl or symbolized by Et. It's easy to name a linear alkane. This is butane or n-butane. N means normal. But how do you name an alkane that looks like this? A branch alkane may be named by choosing the longest chain as parent. In this case, you can think of these carbons as being part of the parent chain. But here there are two ways that you can extend your linear chain. It can be along this line or along this line. But which should be considered? IUPAC recommends that you choose the longest chain with the most number of substituents. Substituents are those groups that replace a hydrogen. This chain starting from this carbon up to this carbon has the most number of substituents. Therefore, this will be considered as our parent. Next, we name all other substituents. We should prioritize them alphabetically and identify them by locants. Now, the substituents for our case is methyl, this is the alkyl group attached to this carbon, ethyl, the alkyl group attached to this carbon, and methyl, the alkyl group attached to this carbon. Take note that this procedure also applies to other non-alkyl groups that are also taken as substituents. For example, the halides such as fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo substituents. You can also say nitro, azido, and others. What about the locants? We should use the set of locants that includes the lowest possible locant or the lowest locant at the first point of difference. The locant is a number that starts from the terminal end. For example, you can start here as carbon 1, followed by 2, by 3, and then we have our first substituent, the methyl. We can also start at this terminal end. We can say this is carbon 1, carbon 2, and there is a substituent at carbon 2, which is also methyl. We should choose the lowest number as our locant, so we should choose the numbering which starts at this carbon. If we continue the numbering from here, then we can say that ethyl is connected at carbon 3 and this methyl is connected at carbon 5. The parent has 7 carbons overall, so this is a heptane. Considering the alphabetical arrangement of our locants, we should start our name with ethyl and followed by these methyl groups. So the correct IUPAC name for this compound is 3-ethyl, 2-5, 
dimethyl heptane. What does first point of difference mean? I will use this compound as an example. We can start our numbering from this end or this end. If we do that, we may encounter methyl groups both at position 2. But what about the next one? If we start from here, you will encounter the next methyl at position number 4. But if you start your numbering from here, you will encounter the next methyl group at position 3. So the first point of difference would be a methyl at position 2 and a methyl at position 3. Here, a methyl at position 2 and a methyl at position 4. The difference in this case here are two carbons. The difference in the case here is just one carbon. So we should consider our numbering starting at this end. We continue that. You can have another methyl group at position 5 and the name of this compound should be 2,3,5-trimethylhexane. It is entirely possible to have branched alkyl chains. For example, if we start from propane, there will be two alkyl groups that can be obtained. If you remove a proton at this position, you will get propyl or n-propyl. If you remove a proton at the internal position, such as this one, you will get 1-methyl-ethyl or more commonly called isopropyl. This is called 1-methyl-ethyl because this carbon is considered as position 1. This is the carbon attached to the parent. Now this is ethyl group, two carbons, and the methyl group is attached at carbon 1. There are four groups that can be derived from the butane or 4-carbon isomers. If you are to consider the linear butane or N-butane, there are two ways that hydrogens can be removed. One from this carbon, the terminal position, and we call this butyl, shorthand is DU, or N-butyl. If you remove a proton at the internal position, then you will have this alkyl group. There are three carbons in the parent alkyl chain and a methyl group attached at C1. So the name for this alkyl group is 1-methylpropyl or sec-butyl. If we then consider 2-methylpropane, the other 4-carbon isomer, it is possible to remove a proton at this position and this alkyl group can be named 2-methylpropyl or isobutyl. If you remove a proton at the internal position, then it's called 1,1-dimethyl-ethyl or 3rd butyl. The IUPAC recommends that alphabetical priority considers the letter I in isobutyl and also in isopropyl. For the case of sec-butyl, if you are going to use this, the sec is ignored and only B is considered. It's the same case for third butyl only the B is considered. Neopentyl is a common branched alkyl group. And this neopentyl can be also named as 2,2-dimethylpropyl. Again, the alphabetical prioritization considers the letter N. On to cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes have cyclic carbon chains with general formula CnH2n. Take note that cycloalkanes have two less hydrogens compared to the linear alkane. To name cycloalkanes, you add the prefix cyclo to the name of the alkane with the same number of carbon. For example, for a three carbon chain, we call it cyclopropane, cyclobutane for four carbons, cyclopentane for five carbons 
cyclohexane or 6 carbons. Now what about if a substituent is present? A locant is not necessary if there's only one substituent. For example, this compound is ethyl cyclobutane. This compound is methyl cyclohexane. If there are two or more substituents, we should use the lowest possible set of locants and prioritize the substituents alphabetically. How will you name this compound? It has an isopropyl group here and the methyl group here. We can start the numbering from here, 1, 2, 3, and we say this is 1 methyl, 3 isopropyl, but that is incorrect. You see the alphabetical priority considers letter I first, so isopropyl group should be at position 1. This must be carbon 1 and this must be carbon 3. So the correct name for this compound is 1-isopropyl-3-methyl-cyclohexane. If you are to name it strictly using IUPAC recommendations, that is not using the isopropyl substituent name, then this is 1-methyl-ethyl. In that case, this name should apply. If you take alphabetical priority, methyl, should come first before methyl ethyl. So carbon 1 should be this way, and this must be carbon 3. The name that strictly follows the IOPAC rule is 1 methyl 3 1 methyl ethyl cyclohexane. What about this one? It has an ethyl group and two methyl groups. To name it, we should use the lowest possible set of locants. So, by looking at it, it is best to consider this as carbon 1, and this being carbon 2, and this being carbon 4. Thus, the proper name for this compound is 2-ethyl, ethyl being prioritized alphabetically, 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. Consider the cycloalkane as a substituent if attached to a longer carbon chain or if more than one ring is attached to a single chain. In this example here, the cyclopentane ring is attached to a longer chain. This has six carbons. In this case, you should name it as 2-cyclopentyl hexane. This example here can be named properly as 1,3-dicyclopentylpropane. Bicyclic compounds are another type of saturated hydrocarbons. They have two fused or bridged rings, such as this one. In bicyclic compounds, we have bridge heads that are carbons that connect two fused rings. And we also have carbon bridges on several sides of the fused rings. There is a 2-carbon bridge here, also a 2-carbon bridge here, and this bridge has only one carbon. This can be drawn in this way by line structural formula or drawn in this manner. A ball and stick model of this compound is this one. To name this compound, you use the prefix bicyclo, followed by the decreasing number of carbons on each bridge separated by periods inside square brackets. For this compound, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons overall. So the name of this compound is bicyclo 2, 2, 1, heptane. What about this compound? These are the bridge heads and the bridge here has three carbons, two carbons in this bridge and one carbon in this bridge. There are eight carbons overall in this structure. So this compound 
is better named as bicyclo 3 2 1 octane this compound here is also a bicyclic compound these are the bridge heads and there are four carbons on this bridge and four carbons on this bridge there's no carbon in this bridge there are 10 carbons overall in this structure so we can call this compound as bicyclo 4 4 0 decane if there is a substituent in the bicyclic ring numbering starts in a bridgehead carbon toward the initial direction of the largest bridge but there are two bridge heads on which side should we start? We can start at this side and call this position 1. If that is the case, we should continue our numbering in the direction of the largest bridge. This is 2, this is 3, 4, 5. If that is the case, then this must be 7. If you start your numbering at this bridge head, then this position here should be 5. And then this carbon should be number 6. That is a smaller number. We can call this compound as 6-methyl bicyclo 3 2, 1, octane There's also a way of classifying a specific sp3 hybridized carbons in a molecule. It is based on the number of attached carbons to that carbon. You can say that a carbon is primary if there is one carbon attached to it. For example, this one. This carbon is primary. We can also say that in this molecule, there are five primary carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. Now this carbon is secondary. There are two carbons attached to it. There's only one secondary carbon in this molecule. This is a tertiary carbon and this is a quaternary carbon. This kind of classification extends to hydrogen, halide, and OH groups attached to such carbon. Thus, we can say that this hydrogen is a secondary hydrogen. If an OH group is positioned in this carbon, then we can say that this is a secondary alcohol. The same thing if you have a halogen here, such as chlorine. That will be a secondary alkyl halide. Alkyl groups may also be classified in this manner. If we take this part here as an alkyl group, then this is a secondary alkyl group. This carbon is attached to two other carbons.